What if I told you that modern exercise machines have a dark and unforgiving past? Welcome to Aggressive Intelligence, where we dive into the often overlooked corners of history. Today we explore the treadmill's transformation from a brutal punishment device in 19th century prisons, known as the treadwheel, to a popular fitness tool in homes and gyms. Let's uncover the harrowing story behind this seemingly innocent piece of equipment. In 1818, Sir William Cubitt, an English engineer who had observed that many prisoners spent a majority of their time in idleness, designed the first penal treadmill or treadwheel. He conceived a device intended to discipline the inmate and at the same time, produce some kind of labor. The treadwheel was a huge wheel with steps around its exterior, approximately 20 feet in diameter. As prisoners climbed these steps, they would turn the wheel, and in theory, their labor was harnessed into useful work, such as grinding grain or pumping water. The reality was much grimmer. Walking the wheel meant relentless toil, reinforcing the belief that idleness led to crime. Despite its brutal design, the treadwheel was popularized throughout British penal institutions. By 1824, it was already used in 54 prisons, a testimony to beliefs in its efficiency regarding inmate control and in obtaining labor. Beneath this facade of productivity, though, lay the real purpose, taking away prisoners' dignity and agency. The mechanism of the treadwheel meant prisoners had to continuously press their feet on the rotating slats, many of them for periods of 6 to 10 hours a day, which is like climbing mountains without ever seeing the peak. The treadwheel was deceptively simple in design, with effectiveness punitive in purpose. While prisoners walked upon the wheel, their collective weight turned it for up to 10 hours a day, with shifts accumulating the equivalent of climbing 5,000 to 14,000 vertical feet. Partitions on each treadwheel isolated prisoners from communication and intensified psychological suffering. This is the forced solitude that led to a routine with no sense of achievement. Hence, the major physical ailments were continual pain, varicose veins, and even death. Whereas the treadwheel was meant to look something very akin to productivity, it generally had little actual utility and often operated at significant loss. This fact only bolstered the cruel intent behind its design. It favored brutal discipline over actual reform or economic benefits stemming from the labor extracted, making it oppression rather than rehabilitation. Life as a prisoner working the treadwheel was one unending blur of fatigue and despondency. They were required to put in shifts that stretched more than 10 hours and for the most part without breaks. In such light, the monotony of the action of walking on a treadwheel drained their physical strength as much as their mental fortitude. Indeed, reports from the prisons show that many of the inmates had various diseases caused by the heavy, unending labor. Chronic pain and injuries, with some leading to death, were the common outcomes associated with this torturous exercise routine. The physical conditions in the prisons were abysmal. Prisoners with little or no kind of protecting clothing from the elements of weather added to the horror of sometimes oppressive environmental conditions. No rest and recovery from their toil further made them worse off in health. Medical neglect, in a sense, had built a record in most prisons. Injuries sustained from the treadwheel were more often than not left unattended, and chronic conditions developed with minimal, if any, medical intervention. Though every category of prisoner experienced its rigors, the treatment of black prisoners after the Civil War showed deep-seated racial disparities. Often, black prisoners were punished much more harshly than their white counterparts since societal attitudes toward black people remained greatly prejudiced by the legacy of slavery. It also reflected the broader pattern of institutional racism inculcated within the system of justice. The treadwheel legacy in America took on another character. While similar punitive methods were applied, they often fell within the context of greater exploitative labor practices against black prisoners. Plantation owners and former slaveholders, struggling to adjust to life without enslaved labor, turned to the prison system as a way to maintain racial control and secure labor. Following the end of the Civil War, Southern states implemented black codes that criminalized minor offenses, like loitering or vagrancy, which targeted newly freed black Americans resulted in a disproportionate number of black people being jailed. These laws focused on how to control the lives of newly freed black Americans and channel them into a system that widely utilized forced labor, disciplinary treatment, and reform. The convict leasing system arose and for all practical purposes, 
re-establish conditions of slavery. Many prisoners were often leased out for manual labor to private plantations, and treadmills were often used as an instrument of control and exploitation, not rehabilitation. Treadmills became especially popular in southern prisons as an advanced mode of convict leasing. Prisoners had to work in insufferable conditions, while the results of their efforts largely remained unappreciated and unrecorded. The violations were systematic. At the same time, private industries benefited from the labor of the prisoners without giving them at least some compensation or rights. This was a parallel with the once abolished institution of slavery that was really terrifying. Despite such oppressive conditions, prisoners could find their way to resist authority in a number of ways. Most went to passive forms, including walking slowly on the treadwheel or malingering. Others attempted acts of overt rebellion, thus attempting an escape away from their harrowing circumstances. But the risks were indeed very high, as grave punishment with death ensuing from them was common. Prisoner resilience stands as the ultimate witness to the indomitable human spirit in situations that no human being deserves. By the mid-19th century, the tide finally began to turn against the treadwheel. Reformers published accounts of the ill effects this brutal punishment was having, leading to public outcries against forced labor on moral grounds. The purported benefits of such a harsh form of discipline led many to rethink whether the psychological toll that the prisoners took was really worth any possible reform. Critics pointed out the utter absence of any rehabilitative value of the treadwheels, claiming it did not at all endow prisoners with any useful skills or even taught a trade. Instead, such inmates emerged from these experiences physically broken and psychologically sapped, good for little in society. The movements behind prison reforms espoused educational programs and psychological assistance as better methods toward reforming offenders. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when we post a new video. Your support motivates us to keep uncovering these important tales. By the late 1800s, both Britain and America began to turn against the use of treadmills in penal systems. Public perception had shifted significantly as reformers continued to expose the inherent cruelty in using treadwheels as punishment devices. Documented reports of the adverse physical and psychological effects from the treadmill brought out the futility in its implementation. As the criticism mounted, prisons began to take up more recent and humane ways of managing inmates. Due to some changes in legislation, the very treadwheels became obsolete in Britain in 1902. By the end of the 19th century, treadmills would disappear altogether, and the whole reformist policy would eventually concentrate on education, skills building, and mental health care for inmates. Approaching the problem in this way had marked a new turn in treating prisoners and reflected the better comprehension of needs for re-education rather than punishment. This change came about far more gradually in the United States. While treadmills remained in use into the early part of the 20th century, the broader pressures for prison reform started to affect the practice, and the use of treadmills began a slow decline. More and more, penitentiaries recognized that humane treatment and rehabilitation deserved a far higher priority, setting new correctional philosophies in place and emphasizing restorative justice compared with punitive ones. Fast forward to the mid-20th century, and the treadmill underwent an incredible metamorphosis. Dr. Robert Bruce, a pioneering cardiologist, invented the modern motorized treadmill for medical purposes, and thus, he revolutionized the way health professionals would evaluate cardiovascular health. This invention laid the foundation for today's modern fitness treadmills and allowed them to break free from the bleak history of their predecessors. The new generation of treadmills was adapted for work in cardiovascular training, so that people can walk and run indoors without any dependence on the weather. Equipped with user-friendly options to adjust speed and incline, the treadmill soon became popular in sport complexes and privately at home. The very first attempt to work out on a treadmill was turned into an easy way to good health, in contrast with the punishment circle of the treadwheel. Today's treadmills boast advanced technology, such as heart rate monitors and interactive capabilities that allow users to customize their workout experience. This evolution from an instrument of torture to a staple in today's world of exercise underlines an incredible shift in design and ethical redefining of what it means to promote health through physical activity. 
history and progress bring us full circle back to the transformative narrative threaded throughout the evolution of the treadmill. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the treadmill's dark past. If you found these revelations intriguing, we'd love for you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on our deep dives into the stories that shape our world. Together, let's uncover more fascinating tales that inform our present and inspire our future.